Can you hold my water, bro? Alright. It's the Bible says, be not of the world, but repent and come out of the world and turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your sins. But there's a lot of you people out there today who claim to be Christians. You claim to be Christians, you profess to know Him with your mouths, but your hearts are far from Him. Jesus Christ said, He who saith, I know Him, but abideth not in my commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Jesus said, If you are of the world, and you participate in the unfruitful works of darkness, then you do not abide in Him if you claim to know Him and you are a liar. That is what the Bible says. There is no truth in any of you. You're living and walking in total darkness. You're of the world. You're wicked. And you need to repent. Jesus Christ said repent or you will all likewise perish skeletons set up, you've got your ghouls and your goblins, you're dressed like witches, you're dressed like wizards. God's judgment should scare people, sir. The Bible says, those who fear the Lord, if you fear the Lord, it is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible says, fear God. Fear God. Fear God. The Bible says, fear not the one who can kill the body, but fear the one who can kill both body and soul in hell, which is God. See, a lot of you are out here celebrating wicked Halloween today. This wicked Halloween holiday, and you think it's just normal. You think it's okay. And a lot of you call yourselves Christians. But see, the Bible is very clear about this. In Titus 1.16, it says, they profess to know God, but in works deny him, being reprobate and abominable. You know these kids are dressed up like not wicked people, right? You know that, don't you? What does that have to do with anything? They're here to get candy. They don't even understand what they're So they're here to just get candy? Yes. Okay. Is that what you think? That's what I know. because I That's what you know? You I know. That's there. because you're deceived, man. Deceived? That's because you're deceived. I'm a born again well, Christian. You're a born again Christian, yes. but you're over there with a with a That's Halloween right. mask yes, I and am. a skeleton yes, cele I celebrating death. Celebrate for these the Bible says, "Do not celebrate death." The Bible says, "Do not give in to necromancers or evil spirits or dead spirits." The Bible says, "Do not follow after witches or wizards." In First John two, ma'am, and uh, Jesus Christ Himself said in First John chapter two. He says, those who profess to know me, but abideth not in my commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in you. You are not a born-again Christian. If you are out here celebrating this holiday, you are not a born-again Christian. The Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. The Bible says, be perfect, as my Heavenly Father is perfect. So if you claim to be a Christian today... You need to obey the words of Jesus Christ. When they used to sacrifice their children, you're, you're introducing your children to the occult at an early age. That's what this is. But a lot of God is love, and that's why I'm out here to preach the truth. God bless you, sir. God is love, and he said to warn the wicked of his evil ways in Ezekiel 33. You don't know the Bible, sir. Go home and repent. You don't know the Bible. That's the problem today, is a lot of you people claim to know God, but you don't even read His Bible. You don't even read the Word of God. I'm a born-again Christian. I go to church every Sunday. And then I go, then I go and I send my life away. I go and I send my life away, and I love my neighbor by preaching the truth. Jesus said to lift up your voice like a trumpet and preach the gospel to all creatures. He said to preach the gospel to all creatures so that man might be saved. It is not God's will that man will perish in hell. It's God's will that you turn from your wicked ways. And Jesus said to repent and sin no more. That there is hope and salvation in Jesus Christ if you repent of your sins. If you turn, if you turn from your wicked ways, that is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That the only way you can make it to heaven is through Jesus. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through me. 
not through wicked holidays. If you deceive your children and lead them into sin, the Bible says, woe well unto you. That is the ultimate horror story. A lot of you parents are going to go to hell someday because you don't heed the words of the Bible and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. How you doing, guys? How's it going? Pretty good, man. Just out here preaching the gospel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, trying to stay warm. Okay. How about you guys? Same yeah. You get a call? Yeah. Yeah, I figured so. Happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You're just preaching the gospel, then? That's it, man. That's it. Out here exercising my First Amendment rights, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Trying to warn these people of, uh, of Halloween and leading their children into sin. That's what I do. I'm a street preacher. I got you. Yep. Yeah, man, you know how it is. You're going to get a call. And you got you to follow up. I get it. We ain't going to stop you, man. That's your right. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Cool, man. Anything uh, else? Yeah, no, just uh, just keep it clean. All right. Otherwise. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I'm standing over here. I'm not up in their face or anything. Yeah. All right. It. God bless you guys. Yeah, All right. Oh, you see, you see people want to call the police on the preacher nowadays, too. You want to call the police on the preacher because you don't like the message. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. But you know, we live in America, guys. We live in America where we have a First Amendment right. Freedom of speech and freedom of expression thereof. Just like you're expressing your evil, you're expressing your evil behavior here today. I'm out here expressing the truth of Jesus Christ. But a lot of you don't understand that because you don't care. You're of the world, you don't care. You smirk, you laugh, you mock, you scoff, just like the Bible says what happened in the end of days. No different. But you're on your way to hellfire. You're on your way to hellfire, and I'm here to warn you. Because the Bible says, warn the wicked man of his ways. In Ezekiel 33, the Bible says, Warn the wicked man of the, his ways. For if you warn not, warn not the wicked man of his ways. It also says do everything out of love. I don't feel like it's much love because you're not, my witness is not bearing witness with you. Have you been standing here the whole time listening no, to me I'm preach? Just watch so you heard life. me for 30 seconds and you made an assumption that I'm not operating in love. I can, I can tell just by the way that you're talking. Well, that right doesn't here. seem very loving. Okay, but listen, I, I understand. Do you think leading I, your children into evil holidays is love? Is this evil? Well, what you're doing is evil. What is evil? Evil, Walk, evil. Walking around the Bible, the Bible says, "Well, unto you who cause these little ones to sin." So what, when you, how is this a the sin? The Bible, the Bible. What, what sin is I'm it? going to what if you let me finish. Do you want to hear me? Do you want to hear me answer your question? Go ahead. Okay, let's have an intelligent debate. So the Bible says to participate not in unfruitful works of darkness. Okay, Jesus Himself said, "Abstain from all appearance of evil." You're out here celebrating Halloween, what is where evil? people what are is evil? where people are dressed like ghouls, goblins, and witches. Are these dressed as ghouls, goblins, goblins, and witches? The Bible says, "Be not of the world." Why are Listen, you so angry with me? I, I'm out here preaching the truth of Jesus I Christ. I can't even talk though. But you you're, won't even let me you're talk. accusing me of doing the same thing you're doing. You're no. up, you're up here no, mad and angry in my face because you won't even let me. I, talk. I wasn't talking to you personally. You could have walked on by, but instead you elbowed me in the back. Yes, because and you're now you're now you're, you're raising your voice in my you face can, because you got a megaphone on. In your voice. You've got a megaphone. Or, or you can let me preach and stop disrupting my First Amendment rights. How about that? Because you're out here doing the same thing, so you can walk on by. You can walk on by. Jesus doesn't. Jesus Christ said, "I am the way, the truth, and the." life. So he I said, nobody, right? I'm not talking to you, ma'am. You don't want to have an intellectual debate. The Bible says, repent or you will likewise perish. But there is hope and salvation today. Jesus Christ can set you free. Jesus Christ is love. God is love. And he said to warn the wicked man of his ways, or he will hold their blood accountable on your hands in Ezekiel 33. A lot of you don't know your Bibles. You go to church on Sunday. See, that's called conviction from the Holy Spirit right there. She didn't like what I had to say. Because it convicted her, it made her upset. And that's what Jesus said to do. Jesus said to go out and lift up your voice like a trumpet and preach in the streets. The Bible says to lift up your voice like a trumpet and preach the gospel. Jesus Christ himself said, all who follow me will be hated by all men. The Bible says you will be hated by all men if you follow Jesus. He says all who follow me will be persecuted. All who follow my face, they don't have the love of God. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, man. Here you go. Somebody never gave you a trick or treat thing, so I'm gonna give you one. No, nah, I don't. I don't this, take that. This, I don't take that stuff. No, nah, that's an idol, man. I don't take that stuff. You don't like cross? Are you a follower of Jesus? I know Jesus. You know the Bible says in First John two, if you know Jesus, if you say, hold on, if you say you know Jesus, but you abideth not in his, in his commandments, the Bible says you're a liar and the truth is not in you, sir. Well, what, ha what does that have to do? With so how can you now? say that you love Jesus 
but then you come up to me and you're okay, trying to give you know, me you know trick what? or treats. If, if you want to talk to me, you don't have to yell to me. Well, if you don't like, I, I'm out here preaching, sir. I'm not going to stop my fine, preaching for I'm anybody. I'm out here to preach, and I don't want to be interrupted. So if you want to, right, well, if know, you want to listen, you can listen. If you have well, legit man, questions, I was, just, I was just like, I, I don't mean any disrespect, but if you have a legit question, I'll be I'll be glad to answer that question. But I'm not going to play trick or treat games. It's not okay. Whatever, man. All right, so if you want to listen to the preaching, you can stand over there and listen. And thank you for preaching the truth. Again. Amen. God bless you. God, God bless you, man. But see, there's a problem. We cannot participate in the ways of the world. We cannot participate in the ways of the world. We have to turn from our wicked ways. Jesus said, repent or perish. He says, woe unto you who lead these little ones into sin. If you're not teaching your children how to live a holy and righteous life in Jesus Christ, you are leading them astray. God is a holy God, and He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life for eternity in God's kingdom. Where there is no death, there is no pain, there is no fear, there is no evil, there is only God and His holy angels, and pure bliss and joy and happiness. No death, no wickedness, none of that stuff. Pray for your pecker that's about that big. Oh, really? That's real nice. My, would you say you're going to pray for my pecker that's that big? You need to repent, you wicked, stupid heathen. See, that's the problem with you people today. You mock God. You, you can smile all day, but you're not going to smile when you're standing before God, sir. You're not going to smile before God. God's going to send you to hell. He's going to send you to hell, and you're going to be begging, Oh, God! God, why? And he's going to say, Because you laughed at my preacher. He says, Come out of the world. Jesus himself says, if you are of the world and you love the things that are in the world, the love of the Father is not in you. No sense in your Why don't you explain how, sir? Or are you just going to walk away like a coward and, and hurl accusations? That's right. You know the Bible in Revelation 21a says that the fearful will find their place in the lake of fire. I'm not harassing anybody. I'm preaching the gospel. In your, in your mind, it's the gospel. It is the gospel. It's what the Bible says. You and I both know you can say whatever you want on the corner because I'm not going to fight you in front of everybody. But you wouldn't say this to me if there's nobody watching. Why are you trying to fight? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything about... Yeah, there's a lot of cowards in the world. Are you going to come up and threaten to fight me, sir? Hey, you want another definition of legal harassment? It's threatening people in, pu in public. I got it on camera. So you need to go repent, hypocrites. You're a punk ass Bunch of hypocrites. You're a ass oh, that's real nice to say in front of your child. You must really love your kid. You must really love your kid with that potty mouth. What? You're talking about sucking appendages in front of children? You sick person. What's wrong with you? This is this is what we're dealing with in America, folks. This evil wickedness. And everybody just wants to turn a blind eye. God bless you, man. You know how you're doing this in front of, like, a bunch of younger kids, right? I don't know you from somewhere. No, you don't know me. Okay. But, I mean, I see what you're doing, but it's really, like, not the time because you got a lot of kids. Oh, I think it's know. a perfect time, man. The Bible no, says to go out and warn the wicked of their they ways. They, they don't because kids don't understand. Are you a Christian? I used to be. You used to be. Why, why'd you I used to be? Because that's just how life is. Religion, religion is just the way of life. Well, see, God, God is not a religion. Man. Let me, let me, let me ask you something. Let me ask you one question. Sure, absolutely. No, Are fine. you from Tennessee? Yeah. That's your problem. Well, not originally. Why don't you explain that? Why don't you explain that? That doesn't because, make any sense. Because, You're going to tell me that's my problem. Because, because, it's because you live, you live in Tennessee. You live in the Bible. Well, I'm from, I'm from the. Well, this is exactly where it's needed to be preached, man. But see, so you haven't even been hearing me preach, so you, you can't no, thoroughly been, assess hearing, what I've done. I've been hearing you, but you haven't seen the reaction you're getting out of everybody. Do you know what the Bible says? Jesus, Jesus said, "If you pre Jesus said, if you preach, the world will hate you." I'm not here for people to like me. I'm here to preach the truth. Yeah, and the truth is, if people don't repent of their sins, they're going to go to hell. That's what Jesus says. He says, "Be not of the world, for if you love the things that are of the world, the, the love thing, of the Father the thing, is not in you." Thing is, so I'm not here to preach the, the truth, people, man. A lot of people, a lot of people, the, there are some religious people, and then some are. There's just times where you, where you should do, and there's times. Oh, this is this is. Oh, this is definitely the time. Well, this so. is definitely the time. Right. Jesus said to go out and lift up your voice like a trumpet. They went into the streets. 
They preached. They preached to everybody, man. And the world, you know what? You know what they did to Jesus, right? They nailed him to a cross. They you, killed him. Why don't, you, why don't you set it up? Why don't you set it up where you can have a gathering somewhere, like at a church or at a convention? The Bible says. All right. The Bible says to go out in the streets. That's all I gotta say. The Bible says to go out in the streets and compel them to come in. If I go sit in a church with a bunch of fellow believers, that's not that's not spreading the gospel. We're out here to we're out here to call sinners to repentance. The Bible says go in the streets and call sinners to repentance. It says, wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded, through Him. Can you turn that off so I can talk to you? No, I'm preaching. I understand you're preaching. I would like to have a conversation. Okay. I'm a fellow Christian, but I don't want to be on the microphone. Okay, well, I'm, I'm out here on the microphone preaching. you have a question? This is a public domain. That's what I'm, I'm out here to I'm do. I'm not debating that. I totally respect your opinion and how... Okay, well, do you know how many people have come up and told me to turn the microphone off? Because that's what people try to do. They come up and they try to have it. They try to have a discussion. And they try to silence the preaching and the truth. And then they mock. And they scoff. So do you have, if you have a question, I'm here in the open public domain. And I can answer your question publicly. Well, my question... I don't have a question. I actually have the concern, the fact that I've been trying to reach people that are... Um, mm -hmm not necessarily going to church okay. and I feel that you're not doing it approach, right, right. No, your approach is very what's my the word aggressive mm. and it, you know how many times I hear that well, can you tell me how many times you've actually had something turn out good for a you? lot of times I can't count are you a preacher or yes are you a I'm a street preacher I'm sorry, are you a pastor? At a I'm not a pastor of a church, but I'm a street preacher. I go out and I minister as Jesus said to do. He said, go out and he said, go out and make I disciples of men. I completely and he said, compel them to come into the church. The church is us. The church are the fellow believers. It's not a brick building. I understand okay? that. So Jesus was a street preacher, and his disciples were street preachers. And the world hated what he said so much, they would come up just like you did. And it was the religious hypocrites of Jesus' time that would come up and say, Hey, we don't like your approach. You're doing it wrong. And they exactly nailed him they and they nailed him to a cross. I it says saying. it in the Bible, man. You say you're a believer. I Do you know the Bible? What does first John two say? I am a believer. Do, are you out here celebrating Halloween? I'm actually at work. And okay. I'm listening to my fellow Alright, but you're but you're coming up to me because you don't like my approach. I'm trying to explain my approach to you, okay? Jesus said to go out and lift up your voice like a trumpet. Okay, I'm out here preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and a warning of hellfire. That's what Jesus did. He warned of hellfire more than he preached of love. Okay, so God's love is to and preach the truth. Condemning everybody. I'm not condemning anybody. The Bible says. I've heard the Bible you says. Said that you the Bible have says if you don't believe, you are condemned already. You don't even know the Bible, ma'am. You don't know the Bible. Please don't. Even you don't know the Bible. What does First John two say? Just because I don't know you. It says if you profess to know Jesus. But you obey not his commandments, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. Okay, but Jesus said, repent or you will perish in hell. That's not condemnation, ma'am. No, the Bible, Jesus himself, Jesus himself said, if you don't repent and turn from your wicked ways, then you're going to go to hell. telling people, as they've been walking by, that they're hypocrites, you've been telling them that they're... Um, I haven't called everybody a hypocrite. I called the people who came up in my face and claimed to be Christians hypocrites. told people that they're cowards. How is that showing the love of Christ? That man threatened me. Okay. Okay, my and then he walked away. So you don't you don't even know the conversation and you're hurling accusations at me. When was Jesus telling you? You're doing the that? same thing. No, when was you're Jesus up here condemning me. You're no, doing the same I'm thing you're accusing me of doing. See, this is what I'm talking about. Hypocrites. You're not having a conversation. You're talking over me, woman, and you're telling me what the Bible says, and you don't even know what the Bible says. Okay, first of all. The Bible says if you love the world and you hate the preacher, you love the world and the love of the Father is not in you. The Bible says if you justify the wicked and condemn the righteous, you are an abomination to God in Proverbs 17, 15. How can you show the love of God if you're sitting there talking to somebody and you're telling him he's a coward? That's what I'm trying to understand. He doesn't love God. Here, take this. You say you're a Christian, it's the word of God. You don't want the word of God, ma'am? This is the Word of God. That is not the Word of God. This the is the Word of God, God right here. It's right in Matthew 7. Not Matthew everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter no, in the kingdom of I'm heaven. I'm sorry, but he's, a, he's trying to intimidate people. I'm not intimidating anybody. I'm preaching. The, uh, why are you trying to shut me up? I'm out here he's exercising my first amendment rights. Here, and I'm sorry. I'm preaching I'm, the truth of God's Word. Hey, can you pull away? I'm no, I'm not. Uh, if you guys don't want to hear the microphone, you can step back. Because honestly, I don't like this closeness. Okay, because a lot of you are coming up in my face and you're threatening me. I've already been elbowed. I've already been elbowed and physically assaulted two or three times today. Oh, I'm not afraid, sir. If I was afraid, I'd run home. Like a coward, I'd run home and stop preaching. So the Bible says... Sir. 
I'm a 61 year old old woman of four children and several grandchildren. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. What gives you the right to impose your thoughts? Jesus Christ. They're yours. Keep them to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you are you a communist? No. I this woman's a communist. She said to keep my thoughts to myself. Oh, on the streets of America, people want to come up to me and boast about how old they are and say, keep your mouth shut and keep your comments to yourself. This is that? America. Did I say yeah, that? you did. It's on camera, too. You want to silence me, but I'm out here in America, in the streets of America, in Gallatin, Tennessee, exercising my First Amendment rights. And I'm exercising. And you're telling me, okay, that's fine, but I'm not going to be quiet. So I would appreciate if you'd stop following me. No, ma'am, the Bible says if you call a man a fool without cause, then you're, then you're going to hell. You're going to hell, ma'am. I'm not. Yes, you are. No, you're a sinner, and you're going to hell, and you're a liar. Really? And you're a hypocrite. Yes. Really? Yes. I'm because you just told me to keep my opinions to myself, and then you said you have the right to speak your opinions. You're a hypocrite. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. There's so many people who are hypocrites today, they don't even realize it. Jesus Christ himself said, you hypocrites, how can you escape the damnation of hell yourselves? That's because Jesus said, you have to turn from your sins, and hypocrisy is a sin. Hypocrisy means you're not living in truth. If you call yourself a Christian today, and you're out here celebrating evil and death, you are a hypocrite, and the truth is not in you. God says... In Titus 1.16, it says they profess to know God, but in works deny Him, being abominable and reprobate. That's what the Bible says. Jesus says in, in 1 John chapter 2, He who says He knows me and abideth not in my commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So if you say you're a Christian, and you're not abiding in God's commandments today, then you are a liar, and the truth is not in you. You need to go home and study your Bibles more, folks. You need to go home and study your Bibles more. Well, you don't like the Word of God? You don't like the Word of God? This woman's mocking the Word of God and claiming that, and thinks she's holier and righteous, more righteous than me, to tell me to be quiet. This is exactly what the Pharisees did to Jesus when he was out preaching in the streets. They would come up and mock and scoff and get in his face and hit him with sticks and stones and chase him off and tell him to be quiet. And then eventually they nailed him to a cross. Jesus said, Repent! Or you will perish. Those are not my words. I'm not condemning anybody. The Bible says if you don't believe in the, in the words of Jesus, then you are condemned already. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says if you don't believe, you are condemned already. See? Can I have one of your pamphlets? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. God bless you. And children. Absolutely. I preach, against, I preach against Santa because Santa's not true. Santa's a lie. So why would you lie to your children? Oh, I'm going to be out here preaching at Christmas too. I'll be out here preaching at Easter because the pagan practice of Easter, you know where that came from? Coloring eggs. People would sacrifice their infants to babies and dip the eggs in their blood. That's exactly where it came from. If you don't believe me, read your history book, 61-year-old woman. You claim to be so old and wise, but you don't know much of history. I study the Bible daily. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. The Bible says, take in your daily bread. The Bible says, be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. I'm out here preaching the gospel. I've been assaulted twice. I've been threatened physically once. And I've already had the cops call on me. See, you people don't want to hear the truth. And then you want to, you want to parade around in your sin and your costumes and act like righteous people. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ said repent or perish. This, this young lady asked me a question. What is Jesus' real name? His real name is Yeshua. That is his, that is his Hebrew name. Yeshua HaMashiach. It means Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is sovereign. God the Father has made, given him sovereignty over all things. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven as we speak, looking down on all of you wicked people who are practicing pagan witchcraft and leading your children into sin. And I'm just here to warn you out of love that you can repent of your sins, you can stop this. I used to celebrate Halloween too. I used to do the same thing before the Holy Spirit convicted me and turned me around and changed the direction of my life. And I repented for it. And I stopped doing it. True repentance. 
It's to turn from your sins. It's to stop what you're doing. If you say you're sorry about something, if you do somebody wrong and you say you're sorry, and you don't stop what you're doing, are you truly repentant? Are you truly sorry? No. God knows if you're sorry. God knows your heart. It is not the will of God that man shall perish. No. It's the will of God that all men would repent. It's the will of God that you would repent and turn from your sins and live a holy and righteous life and abide in the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father but by Him. Jesus wants you to live a holy and righteous life. Can I have one of the pieces of literature? Yeah, man. Uh, Absolutely. Are you a Christian? Oh, I can, I can give you my testimony and everything. One of the things beforehand. <clears throat> okay, that lady's one of my agents. Okay. okay. And one of the things that upset her, and I don't know how, how it was used or whatever, but... It's all right, man. She, she I, get said, it. I get it all the time. She said, hey... That he called me woman, you know, hmm? which what? was to her was insulting and everything else. And I've got her crying in my office and everything. I didn't else. mean anything so, by that, but I, I, Jesus, I understand. I understand. Uh, can you tell her this? Because she does, she does no. claim to be a Christian. Uh, Jesus actually told his own mother Mary. He said, "Woman, do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended unto my Father." Right. So it was just a biblical okay. figure of speech. That, right. That's all it is. When, I, when I'm out here preaching, I, I speak from the Bible, Believe from me. the Holy Spirit. Believe me, I understand. That's it. I understand it. So. All. Okay. Let's see people get offended. Okay. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. And, and and her point is valid. Okay. It, it, it is it is very what, valid. What point is that? In that in that sometimes being abrasive, which is really what it is. Okay. And, and I under, I understand that. You know. I mean, this is what my testimony. Mm -hmm. Okay. I grew up independent, fundamental Baptist. Okay. I'll, my, I'll hear your testimony, my, and then I want to give you mine. My dad went to Hiles Anderson College. Okay. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> and we went through everything. Okay. Okay. He was, he was a pastor. Okay. Okay. The church I grew up in, where he was an assistant pastor, they would do the same kind of stuff, going on the street corners, Oceanside, California. Amen. Okay. Doing Good. all this stuff, and and I can tell you from experience. Mm -hmm that it turned more people off than it turned on. Okay. And that there are, there are other... There can, I, are other can, I address, can I address that point sure. real quick? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I appreciate you coming up to me. Friendly. I, I'm JT, by the way. I'm Chuck. Good to meet you, Chuck. All right, so I have a similar testimony. Um, <clears throat> I was raised in a Christian home, but then I strayed away from the faith in my 20s, okay? But I'd say probably in my 30s, you know, the Holy Spirit convicted me of my sins. I started reading the Bible more and I started realizing, hey, the way I'm living is not really living in the truth and abiding in Christ. Well, a friend of mine about four years ago brought me out to this event where they were having a drag queen story hour in Cookville at a public library. And they were sitting down little children on their laps and reading bedtime stories and then telling them it's okay to be confused about your gender. So we went there to, I guess, protest, you could say, right? Mm -hmm. So I ran into a group of those street preachers like you're talking about. They were Baptist street preachers. Walked up to him and I said, hey, I said, you know, aren't you a sinner too? You're out here condemning people. You know, aren't you a sinner? And he looked at me, he said, he said, no, sir, I'm no longer a sinner. The Bible says that uh, God heareth not sinners. And I was like, what? I was like, wait a minute, show me that. And he showed me in the Bible where it said that. So I went home that day and I was pretty convicted. I went home and I started reading my Bible more. I've realized that what the guy was, say was saying was true. Okay. So it really convicted me. I repented of my sins. I repented harder than I've ever repented before. I called the guy. I, find, I found the guy on social media, reached out to him, and apologized to him for falsely accusing him because I was calling him a hypocrite, telling him he was up there condemning all these people, judging them unrighteously, all this stuff. Um, so anyway, God led me into street preaching. Okay, so the Bible says to lift up your voice like a trumpet. It says to go out in the streets, compel them to come in. That, that is a commandment from Jesus Christ himself. In fact, Jesus was a street preacher. Jesus went out in the streets with his disciples, as I'm sure you know, and, and he went out and he preached to people and he said that the world hated him so much that they they persecuted him because they hated him for it. and he said all who follow me will be persecuted all who follow Christ and live godly in Christ will be persecuted and the world will hate you okay so I, I'm, I'm not I'm not out badge here of honor. it is no it is no, let, let, me, let me can I explain having people hate you is not a badge of honor okay no it is according to Christ it says it says rejoice when men shall speak evil of you falsely and persecute you, persecute you for my name's sake. 
So yes, it is a badge of honor according to God. This is right out of the Bible, man. So you may you, you may you may have a different worldview than I do. Yeah. But I have a biblical well, worldview. Yeah, and it's not necessarily a worldview. It's it's more along the lines of so if I, people's can, personality. Can I make one more point real quick, sure, and then I'll let ahead. you finish? No, no, okay. So the the thing about you have more people being turned off than not. Okay, that you made a valid point there. You brought up a good a good concern. But the Bible says when that one lost sheep strays from the flock and you bring in that one lost sheep out of the 99, okay, then all of the heavens will rejoice over that one soul instead of all of the righteous that are already there. Yeah. So it's our job to seek out that one lost person. Now, I will tell you this. I go and I preach at LGBT events. I go and I preach at abortion clinics. I preach out in the streets sometimes with this stuff. I, I preach in front of crowds of thousands of people, okay, and I, I promise you, I have seen people repent right in front of me. They come up, they ask questions. I'm actually good friends with a guy who's an atheist, who was an atheist, okay, up until last year. And I preached to him, and he, he changed his ways. Um, another guy ran into the streets uh, a few weeks ago down in downtown Nashville. They were holding that freedom rally down there. I went down there and preached. Uh, this guy came up to me all convicted. There were th a thousand people there. And that one guy came out of the crowd, and now we're, we're friends, and we're communicating. He went home, he bought a Bible, he's repented of his sins. So it, to me, it's not, and to God too, it's not about getting the masses of people, because that's actually, that thought process is contrary to what the Bible says. The Bible says that many will find the broad path to destruction, but few will find the straight and narrow path that leadeth unto eternal life. So I'm not out here to get all these hordes of people to like me by passing out candy. That's precisely what I'm out here preaching against. Sure. See what I'm saying? Yeah, not to mingle with the world. So. That is, that is sound biblical doctrine, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's what I'm out here to preach. And it does offend people, man. I'm not out here to intentionally offend people. It's the word of God that convicts people. Well, I don't but, speak my so, own opinions. So let me let me ask you this, okay? If it's the word of God that convicts people, right? <clears throat> then if you were to hand out, and you know what chick tracks are and that kind of thing, right? Okay. If you were to stand out here and all these people that that went by, mm -hmm. you were to hand out whatever, a thousand, fifteen hundred, whatever there's been. Right. You were to hand out those chick tracks, do you think that We do that, that too. That, that one person. So you're you're saying so at this point in time, and obviously you don't know I know where you're whether, going I know where you're going with yeah, this. I mean yeah. you, you just don't know so, whether you've made an impact on people or not, right? So the Bible says okay. who can hear without a preacher. Right. And that, that is a commandment from Jesus. He said to go again, like I said before, he said to go out and, and, and go into the highways and byways. So I'm here on the highway, I'm on the public sidewalk. And he said, go out and lift up your voice like a trumpet. That's why I've got the amplification because my voice is kind of low. I can't speak loud unless I'm on it. And it says to lift your voice like a trumpet so all may hear and be compelled to come in to the body of Christ. So we are to go out and shout the gospel. In, in fact, it says to climb up on the rooftops, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm 41 and I'll probably fall off and die. So, <laughs> but that's what the Bible tells us to do, man. It says to go out and preach. And my, my intentions are not ill-founded. I'm not out here to condemn people or to offend people. I'm out here to preach the yeah. truth of God's word, hoping that that one person will be convicted by it right. and see that they're not really living their lives according to what Christ has said. Yeah. And this, this isn't a New Testament, by the way, so this is an Old Testament stuff. Um, and and it, we can get into that debate. But and, and I get my question the Bible is, says to come out think, and preach. I mean, yeah, but do you think that you would be able to make more headway? Do you think that no. you would be able to have more of an impact? No, you know what people. people you know what people do when I when I when you stand in the corner and you don't say anything and you just hand these out. They do this and they oh thank you, oh, no, and throw me. it in the trash. Believe me, I know. So but the you, people, but the people that save them, the people that do take them. Yeah, so so they're I, more apt to look at them and they're more apt to. So know. so let me ask you this logical question. You're making a point here. Why do you think somebody would be more apt to listen to it? in writing when they don't even read their Bible to begin with because all I'm passing out here is Bible verses. Mm -hmm. These are the Bible verses that your churches don't teach. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and what is this? Is this KJV 1611? Or? Uh, it's just the KJV, but I mean, we can go in the ESV. We can go to the NIV. I've read them all. I've read all the versions. There, See, there, that, are, sli there are slight differences, yeah. but they're, they're synonymous with other words in the KJV. So it's not yeah. very different. And, I, and trust me when I tell you... The whole tittle thing, you know, KJV 1611, that's the one that is, you know... Well, that, that's why I... I down from God. I and, adhere to the KJV. Know. That is my default. So when, yeah. when I have people like in the churches who are being taught ESV or NIV, I always change them in the direction of the KJV for that reason. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into that theological debate. But yeah. the thing is here is... What makes you think that, like, if I if I hand this Bible these Bible scripture out, I'm out here preaching, someone gets mad at me and comes up and they're like, "Well, you can't condemn sinners and da da da." Well, I'm not, man. It's it's what the it's what the Bible says, right? What makes you think that they're going to go home and read this any more than they're going to listen to the words that I'm speaking directly from the Word of God? 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's more effective. It's the whole, it's the whole confrontational I know. thing. You just but Jesus didn't say, along. but I'm, I'm obeying Jesus' commandments. But here, let, me, let, me, let me just explain something to you. Jesus didn't say to go out and hand out gospel tracts. He didn't say to go hand out Bibles. Okay. Mm -hmm. He didn't say to go hand out the scripture. What he said was to go out in the highways and byways, lift your voice like a trumpet, and preach. And he said, if you do that, the world will hate you meaning the people of the world. So the majority of the people, and again, I'm going to go back to this verse. It says that many will find the broad path of destruction that leadeth unto death, but few will find the path to eternal life that leadeth unto salvation. Few. That means less people than most mm -hmm. are going to hearken unto the words of Christ and repent of their sins and turn from their wicked ways. Okay? So that's what really convicted me because I thought I was a Christian my whole life, man. I, I, I was a drunkard. I was a fornicator. I was smoking pot. I was doing all kinds of stupid, silly stuff in my life. And I thought I was saved because I said Jesus. But Jesus says in 1 John 2, he says, if you, if you say that you know me and you abide not in my commandments, then you are a liar and the truth is not in you. So are you so, once, once saved, always saved? No, no, that's, no. That's, that's a wicked false doctrine. Okay. And, and that's precisely, you hit a good point because the once saved, always saved believe that they can get baptized in water in their Baptist church, okay? They think that they can, you know, repent once of their sins mm -hmm. and then they're clean forever and then they can just go back out and dabble with the world and do whatever they want. But that is contrary, 100% contrary to what Jesus taught. Mm -hmm. In Titus 1.16, it says they profess to know God, but in works deny Him, being abominable and reprobate. And that's because people are going out and saying, oh, I know Jesus, I know God, but they're living complete lives of sin, and they're deceiving their children, they're deceiving everyone around them because they're not carrying themselves according to the Holy Spirit. And in Galatians 5, it says, walk in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not commit the lust of the flesh. And then it lays out in Galatians 5, at the bottom of the chapter, what those lusts of the flesh are. And that would be your fornication, your idolatry, your adultery, your drunkenness, all of those things which I have told you before, the Bible says, shall not inherit the kingdom of God, those who commit such things. So you can't have evil people who are still living in sin in heaven at the same time. God doesn't allow it. God loved the world enough that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him would not perish. But then in 1 John 2, it, it iterates that, you know, you if you confess to know Jesus, you have to live and walk as he walked. And that's actually a Bible verse too. It says, walk as I have walked, abideth in me, abideth in my truth, he says. And if you don't do those things, it says it right here, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And this is straight from the Bible. I mean, you can look in the ESV, I mean, the NIV, yeah. whatever it may be. You're going to find the same, but I mean, you're not, same message. So you're not associated with any kind of church or anything like No, I, I, I came out of the churches, man. And if you read 2 Thessalonians 2, it'll actually kind of warn you and tell you Jesus gave us warnings. He said that in the end of days, there'll be mockers and scoffers. There'll be, the church will fall away. There'll be a great falling away, which I'm sure you've heard because you said you were raised in a Baptist right. home. So you've heard it all. I understand that. Yeah. Um, the problem is, man, and I think where, where you kind of strayed away from the past, which is where I did, is I saw a lot of hypocrites in the church. I saw a lot of pastors who were hypocrites. In fact, our pastor uh, left his wife for, for a gay man, okay, and turned homosexual and left his wife and was committing adultery with another man. And it devastated the church. Yeah. And a lot of people are fell away. because area, you... I'm originally from New York, but we moved here probably when I was like 12 years old, 13, something like that. Uh, but I've lived in Gallatin for about 10 years. Okay. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, that's the thing is like, I went to church my whole life and I saw so much hypocrisy and I'm like, wait a minute, this stuff doesn't line up with the scripture. Why do you have pastors who are teaching their congregations that they can still live in sin, that we're all sinners still, when the Bible says God heareth not sinners, but unless you be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, and we know what the will of God is, it says it all throughout the Bible, not to turn from your sins. Jesus says, uh, he said to the man in the temple who was repenting of his sins, he said, okay, go and sin no more or a worse thing will happen to you. And the woman, the woman who repented of her adultery, he told, her, he told her, he said, "Go and repent no more, or go and sin no more." You know, I don't condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So that's because she was repenting. She's not condemned if she repents. See, so I'm not out here condemning people. One woman came up and said, "I was, I was condemning people." Um, I think it may be the woman you're talking about, but I'm not condemning anybody. I'm out here preaching the truth, and they feel like it's condemning them because it's convicting them. You see no, what I'm saying? My, my agent, her, her main concern was, and, and she. I mean, she is, I mean, she goes to church. She, you sure. know, a lot of people that, go to church. That kind of thing. But, but what I'm saying is, for her, it just, she wants to see other people turn their lives around. Sure. And just the approach that you're taking, she feels that it was turning people off and, okay. and that they, they wouldn't. And, and, and she's, she's got, she's got the right to her opinion. Okay? No, that's, I mean, that's fine. Everybody does. And, and that's, 
that's where she was. Uh, it's not a hundred. I'll disagree. It's not a hundred percent biblical opinion she has. And and look. And here's the deal. Here's the thing. The Bible also teaches in First Timothy two. Okay. And I don't mean any disrespect here, but this is a commandment from God. It says, I suffer a woman not to teach or assert authority over the man to teach, but to be in silence and learn with all subjection. What that means is women are more emotional than men are. Okay? We know that. We're, we're built differently. It's nothing disrespectful. Jesus, uh, God ordained a certain way for the church to be. Okay? So she comes up to me. She's getting, she was kind of abrasive and aggressive with me. It's like, you're up here condemning people. She's shaking. She's getting all mad. Yeah. But then she accuses me of doing the same thing she did to me. So all I did was point out her hypocrisy. I didn't mean anything disrespectful. But I'm like, ma'am, you know, you're, you're living in hypocrisy. You're doing the same thing you did to me. And that's why she's upset. Okay. Now, when I said woman, I didn't mean anything disrespectful by that. I, I was trying to go into some Bible stuff, but she didn't want to hear it. Now, as far as like the different approach, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, I believe it is, it says that not everybody has the same gifts and not everybody has the same, uh, um, I guess, gifts from God to go out and preach. Like some are preachers, some are teachers, um, some, you know, stay home with the children, some do this and that in the church. So we all have a different calling, I guess is my saying, right? So her calling may be to go and directly minister to people, which I'm ministering. I feel like I'm ministering right now. I have private one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. I love you, man. I love everybody I talk to. I have no hatred in my heart whatsoever. But... Christians, a lot of times, the, the problem is the church is sick and these Christians are coming up to us, street preachers. We're doing exactly what Jesus commanded us to do as men of God. we got to go out and preach the gospel. What, what yeah. happens, I mean, if you, somebody comes <clears throat> up to you and you, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you know, mentor them or, you know, proselyte, whatever. Right. Um, I mean, do you turn them over to a specific church? I mean, do you say, you know, okay, well, you know, now, you know, you're kind of on the on the right path. No, I give I give them my phone number, and we okay. talk and stuff like that. And I do urge so them to have pastor I, them for the most part, or I, I kind of coach them in the right way, in the right direction. It's up to them, you know, their walk with God at that point. Um, I tell you, a lot of times we become good friends, and a lot of times they become preachers with us, mm -hmm. and they go out and preach the gospel. Um, I do. I always urge everybody to find a local fellowship if you can. The problem is, is most of the churches today are teaching for profits. They're not teaching the whole truth. That's the sad reality of the church. That's why the church is sick. That's why my main message out here today was to the Christians. I know these pagans and these unbelievers, they're not going to listen because they don't believe in God. There's a lot of Satanists who, out, who are out here uh, celebrating Halloween today. Right? So, Satanists, it, it's actually a... Let me turn this off. Give me a second. It's actually a Satan, Satanist holiday. Okay, a lot of Satanists love this holiday. No, I understand. And, it, and this is... I, like the, I said, I grew up in this stuff, yeah, man. I'm, you're not... You're not telling me I and I used to celebrate Halloween, man. I'm not a hypocrite. I used to, like I said, I was the chief of sinners, as Paul put it. I was probably worse than anybody on this street, man. But I came out of that life of sin, and I turned to righteousness. I turned to truth. Jesus said to be righteous, I am right. Be holy, for I am holy. Be perfect, as my Heavenly Father is perfect. So I try to walk a straight, narrow path. I try to live in righteousness. I don't choose to sin. I don't sin willfully. Okay? And that's why I'm out here. I'm saying, you know, wash your hands, you sinners. Purify, purify your hearts, you double-minded. That's what the Bible says. And, said, and Jesus said to go and sin no more. So, you know, I'm not out here preaching anything contrary to the Bible. I'm not out here on my own will. I'm just preaching directly from the Word of God. And it's the sound biblical doctrine. The Bible even says, I think it's in 1 Peter, it says, uh, if any man cometh to you and preach not this sound doctrine, then turn away from him and, and don't listen to them. So you have a lot of preachers in the churches today who are preaching a, I like to call it a, a half lukewarm watered down gospel. And in the book of Revelation it says, uh, that God will spew the lukewarm out of his mouth. So that's your that's your average Christian out there who's going to church on Sunday. Uh, they're not abiding in God's commandments, but they profess to know him. It's like with Easter, man. I'll be out here preaching on Easter because the, the origins of Easter, you know where that came from? It's like the, the, it was a pagan holiday, and they used to take eggs, sacrifice their infants to their demon god, and then they would dip the eggs in their blood and color their eggs. It, it's just a disgusting practice, and the church has adopted all of this stuff and tried to rewrap re it and gift package it into this holy thing. And the Bible's very clear. It says, first in Jeremiah 10, learn, don't even learn the ways of the heathens. Don't pick up their practices. And it says, who can take an unclean thing and make it clean? Nobody. Nobody. You can't take something unclean and make it clean. So this is, this is what I'm out here to preach, is that a lot of Christians don't even study their Bibles. And it says, in the Bible, to study to show yourself approved, and my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So that's God warning his own people, his Christians, that, hey, if you don't study the Word of God yourself, you're not going to be approved when you stand before me on your judgment day. Yeah. If you don't study, you're not, you know, I'm going to reject you. 
It's right. It's right there in the Bible, and and that's all I'm out here to preach, man. No, that's and, it. And and I get it. And you know, people you, can choose to hear. Yeah. They can choose not to hear. I mean, that's up to them, you know. Okay. So, if if you would just maybe as, try to explain if, that to her, I, I can I can explain that to her, and I'm I'm sure that would be fine. But I don't think it's an explanation. I don't think. Number one, there's no way either of you are ever going to see eye eye on stuff. We may that's not. Just, that's just the, the reality not. of it. But mm -hmm. as as another person, as a, a female, okay, mm -hmm. she was offended, she was hurt, and I, well, I would ask you if you could, without without any of this other stuff, okay, if you could just tell her, I'm sorry I offended you. And that would be it. I can't apologize for offending her because the Bible says that the word of God is quick. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts through the bone and the marrow, and it offends people. And that's all I was doing is preaching the word of God, and it offended her. That's why she initially came across the road to approach me aggressively, and she got in my face and started berating me. So that's the thing. I'm not going to apologize for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, no, no. I'm, Jesus, not, asking to, I'm not asking you well, that, to Well, that's what it would be. If I no, apologize to her... you would be apologizing for basic... For insulting her calling her woman okay you said is she well, not a woman i mean come on man let's be real people okay. are so offended okay, nowadays it's derogatory it's not okay if you're if you're how is it derogatory to call a woman a woman if i called you man are you going to think that's a derogatory term? no no no. but what i'm saying is remember derogatory can be in terms of vocal intonation and everything else okay i could call you joe but if okay I yell is, joe, is she gonna is she gonna then, apologize to me for telling me that i'm out here condemning you know, people falsely you, you see know, my point, man? I, I, okay, I get you. The Bible says, just, be not I offended. Look, I just look and... If, if your intention was to get me to apologize for preaching, no, no, I'm not going no, to. No, no, that, that wasn't my intention to apologize for preaching, okay? Here's what I would, here's somebody, what I would say. If somebody, and we, ended up, somebody ended up saying something to somebody, okay, that whether they were right or that, whether they were wrong, okay. okay, if it offended them, then, you know... Here, here's, I mean, what I'm, here's what I'm going to say to you. Hurt? Here's what I'm going to, because it does, because then I would be apologizing for the word of God offending her right. because she got offended because of the preaching. That's why she initially came over. I'm going to tell you this. First of all, if she's offended for being called a woman, she needs to work on that. that that's just what I would tell her. I'm not going to apologize for that, okay? It's the same. I'm like man. I'm like woman. I didn't know her name. If that offends her, there's a problem there, okay? We, we shouldn't be so offended over little petty things. Mm -hmm. People say all sorts of crazy things. Look, dude, I was out here no, preaching. I, I was out here I preaching earlier. I'm you know what somebody did? They came up and elbowed me in the back, tried to push me in the street. Mm -hmm. I had two people call the cops on me, okay? I had another woman, girl get in my face and grab my arm and start yelling and screaming in my face, okay? Is that not offensive? I don't ask for an apology for these people. I say, God bless, go repent of your sins, and turn from your wicked ways. I'm not going to apologize to her. If she's convicted, she needs to pray about that and try to seek God and God's will and see why she's offended by God's word. It wasn't me that offended her, man. That's the point. I didn't offend her. It was the word of God that offended her. If she's offended over me calling her a woman, that that's... I'm sorry, I don't agree. That's a bad thing. That's fine. That's a bad thing. That's we we can agree to disagree yeah, on that point. Yeah, that's, that's but uh, perfectly fine. I understand. But yeah, no ill will, man. Just um, you know, it is what it is, and I'm out here to preach the gospel as Jesus commanded us to do. So. Well, and I, I mean, I hope at at one point in time, you know, down the road, you know, whatever, if you know, when you stand before the Lord or whatever, that that He'll say. Well done, now good and faithful servant. Amen. Instead of saying, you Amen. know what, you scared little children. You know, Whoa. But you don't. So you think I'm scaring little children? Let me ask you well, a question, no, no, no. dude. No, 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 no. no, no. Let me, let me. They've got demons. Got little kids around. They've got demons set up with okay, skeletons, okay. bro. Okay. Look, look at that thing over there. No, look at that thing over there. No, I'm serious. Think logically for a minute here. I'm not trying to insult you, man, but look. You told me I'm scaring little children. Look at that. Look at that demonic face. Loud. You think. There's loud music. There's a bunch of cars going by. That's just yeah. no, man. Well, hey, and, and the, it's fine. Like you said, the I mean, Bible says to go out and preach in the streets. Different. There were there were children two thousand years ago when Jesus was preaching and yelling yeah. in the streets. Yeah. So hey, man, turn All to right. God, repent of your sins, read the Bible verses, man. It sounds like you've fallen away from the truth.